G'day folks. Well, this is the Grills 2 cube. It is a three by three turning cube and it does catch, I have to say. It's a little bit squishy and it's also a vertex turning cube where both these parts turn as well. I have no clue whatsoever why it's called the Grills and why it's called the Grills 2. I had a look on the Twisty Puzzles Forum Museum. I couldn't even find the Grills 1. So anyway, there we go. This is an interesting cube. It would be a far better cube if the turning was better. But what happens is you go to turn these spaces and, and sometimes they turn fine, but you can see there it's just sort of caught. And generally what's happening, I don't know if the angle will work, but the corners kind of get misaligned. And generally, let's see that one's misaligned as well. If I turn that back up, it'll then go. So that's the, the big issue with this cube. Nevertheless, let's go about solving it. My broad outline for solving is to solve the centres, first of all and then to reduce these edges so all of that part is the same colour, and then to solve it as a reduced 3x3 three three cube. Now we can get a little single twisted corner at the end, which is pretty cool and not too hard to fix at all. So we will fix that at the end. So I'm not going to take you through the entire solve for this one. I'm just going to make sure I show everything that's essential. So let's start with the centres. All we're doing here, choose any centre you like. I generally, I would just choose the whites because I like working up, but there's no need to do that. I would probably do something like, get those two there. There's another one here, turn that in. And there's another one here. So you're just turning faces and then turning that large vertex, if you like, down to there. That's done. And pretty much now, I would just look at the color on the top face I'll turn that onto the red face and then put those, you can see there's two pieces, there's actually a third. Move them so that the fourth is at the top. I've got a red here, so for this first one, I can just turn that red in and we're done. I have to be a bit more careful now, but I would say, okay, let's get the green into there. So I'll turn that position up, turn the face on, put the green on, and that ensures that the red that I put there will stay there. Now, those two can be turned to the bottom. You can see it's kind of deforming. It's probably the best word I can use there. We've got oranges here. I've got no blues, no oranges. And the greens are somewhere else. So let's just get perhaps an orange in here initially. So that orange can just turn straight down. There'll be an orange on the blue face, which I can turn. And now I've got those two. That can go to the bottom. Now there's a blue here. So what I would probably do would be, I don't, again, I don't want to dislodge the red. So I'd probably turn that blue onto that position, turn its other position to there, and then undo. And it just means that if that was a piece that I needed to deal with, I could, and it also won't wreck the reds. It looks like I've got just some swaps to do here of various kinds. So perhaps first of all, let's get the blues. It's a little bit annoying, but that's fine. So we'll get this blue over first. And that's fine. I'll also turn that around. So this is ready for the next blue, which is over here. So as a setup, I can put that piece onto the orange face and then just turn that around, put the blue onto it, undo, technically, undo that, and then undo the setup move. So this is just a whole bunch of really, really simple moves. The last one here, that's done. Is that done? I don't need to turn anything back. That's it for the centers. So they're always as simple as that. We haven't done anything else, so all good. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I don't want to do this. I'm not interested in that at the moment. What I'm interested in is getting these little small pieces attached to these large edge parts. So I'm calling this an outer edge, a middle edge, and an inner edge. I want to get the outer edge attached to the middle edge. And this is where I certainly won't do all of them, but this is my method for doing it. Is I'll just start with any corner. I note that's an orange white. So that's going to turn around to there. So I want to get the orange white piece that belongs there into that position. So that's just a matter of finding it first. That's an orange white, but it'll turn up to there into the wrong position. So now I know it's got to be the other orange white. 
Now, this is a great one actually to start with because I was going to show this anyway. What happens if that orange white is on the same edge as this orange white here? So the easiest thing to do is just to turn it off temporarily and now flip this edge so that comes over to that position. So you can flip it however you like. I'll just do it in the normal fashion that I would flip two edges on the top. So that orange white is now in that position. When I turn the corner back, that has placed. So that's, I'm glad that happened because that is probably the only, it's only one of two little issues that can occur. So what I might do then is just turn that out of the way and say, all right, I'm going to do red yellow. Now it happens that this red yellow, that's beautiful. So that red yellow is now next to this one. So that's good. But what I'll try and do is say, well, when I turn that up, it's going to push a white red to that position. So I'd like to get a white red to this position first, just so I can get two of them done. And just looking that again is going to be the wrong white red. So we'll locate the other one. And this is often the hardest, well not the hardest, just the, the most time consuming part of this whole thing is just finding in, in this initial stage, finding the pieces that you want and then try to turn it up okay so the white reds there so now what's happened is when i turn that little corner the, the red yellow is placed the white reds placed all i would do is just start with the next one here this is a blue orange so i would then replace with the blue orange piece should i do one more probably not replace with the blue orange maybe i should is that the correct blue orange no because it's going to land there so we need the other one, which is here. So I'll just turn that up into position. Like so, that's a green white. So I need to find the green white piece that goes there. That's the wrong one. Oh, there's the other one. So this other one, I'm just gonna bring that down to the bottom. And that can now be turned up into position Like that so when I turn that little corner now I've got two done that's that's really all we're doing let me cut away to the last thing that can happen on this scenario okay now this is the scenario I mentioned this is slightly harder than having three pieces to do on separate edges so what we really want is one piece on this edge to do so another piece on this edge and another piece on this edge but you can see at the moment that I've got the green red has to go around to there then this blue red has to go to here, it's on the same edge, and that blue yellow comes back to here, that's the final three cycle. So if you're faced with this sort of thing, what you all you need to do is turn, so this one here over to make that piece. Now it knocks out this red yellow down here, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do now is flip this piece around. So again, I'll just attempt to do the normal thing here. Get that piece flipped around. Here we are back and I've got to put that red yellow back. When I do, the blue red here that was pushed out will turn back into its correct position and that will go to its correct position. So that's the hardest it gets is finishing off the last three of those little pieces. All right, well, the next stage is to now still ignore. So this inner edge piece, the, the red white, ignore that entirely. I've got these pairs that I want to get together. So I want to get that white blue with the other white blue. So I'm going to do it in much the same way as I've done these little ones. So I'm basically going to say, where's another white blue perhaps that I can put here? And there's only one of them and it's got to be somewhere. Has that for profound? So we will theoretically locate it. Again, this is the most annoying part. Well, not the most annoying, but this is a... a an annoying part, oh my goodness, it's right there, as per usual. So let's bring that around so that it is where it needs to be. And in fact, it was that positioning. Now I should say there is a slight danger when you're turning that these things just turn so easily that you'll find, hey, what's happened? Oh, that's just knocked out. Just put it back and it's all, it's all fine. 
So, all right, so I've got a blue white and the other blue white here. I want to turn that blue white onto there to make it. Now you'll notice that it does knock centers out. So what I've found the easiest thing to do is to still do it in the same way. So the white green comes here. I want to get the other white green piece there first so I can make two at a time. Uh, here it is. Let's put that into position. And that will have to go. So green, white on the bottom. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's set up. I'll turn it on and make that one and that one. That's good. The centers are out. Now, you can either make sure that the next one turns back this way, or you can just keep going around. It doesn't matter. And when you're done, you'll either have the centers back in position, or you'll just have one three cycle to do it. And I'll demonstrate that. So if I was doing this, I'd say, right, what's the next one? Orange, yellow. Uh, I'll put an orange, yellow here. And where is it? Oh, wherever that is, which is on the bottom. Get that over into this position. And I do need to do, generally, the full four turns. Otherwise, I'll find that the center parts may go wandering. So the orange yellow is there, coming onto here. The red yellow has got to go up to there. So I need the red yellow with the red on top. So that will be something like that. Okay, so when I turn that now, it's made the red yellow, it's made the orange yellow, and you can see the centers are back. So next I might say, instead of doing this orange green, I'll say, well, I'll get the yellow green and put it over here. I can do that as well. Or I can get the orange green, whatever works. Let's just go this way. That's orange green. Now the green red is going to go here with the green on top. So I'll look for that. There it is. So that's ready to go. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get to either all, this, all, all the edges being paired and the centres are back, or they're all paired and the centres are out. And I'll cut back in when I get to that point. All right, well, this is the basically the scenario where I've got three left to do. I've got the orange, white's got to go there, the white, red's got to go there, the blue, yellow's got to go there. All the other edges are paired. The problem is that if I just turn them on, Yes, I've paired the edges, but you can see now the centers are out. So what I would do here, and this is the same thing that happens if you get to that exact point. You just have to basically go, oh, hang on a minute. With those three, I need to turn them back so the centers are okay. Now, instead of just doing a single turn, what I would do would be to say, well, let's turn the white orange onto here. Then I'm going to use this third piece and I'll bring it out and have it over here ready and waiting. So the first thing is I'll just, I'll put it, over to the other side, just temporarily. There it is. So I'm going to firstly turn the white orange onto its other edge to make that edge. Now I'm thinking, well, I've got to put something here so that when I turn it back and the centers return, there's a blue yellow. So I need the blue yellow piece to be here. So I'll look at this and say, mm, okay, to get the blue yellow to that end, I need to turn this edge around, bring it up, undo, undo. And now you can see that I'll turn the blue yellow back. This white red will also come and solve as well. So that, that, and that have now solved and the centers are all back together. Now there's one more little thing. Let's have a look at that. All right, and this is the scenario where we've got two left to do. We've essentially got a swap. So I've got the blue yellow has to go there and the red white has to come here in order to complete this. I don't have a third piece that I can use to help me out. So the way to deal with this is to essentially turn one of the colors onto its other color with that turn to displace this color. And what I want to do now is simply flip this edge that I just turned that onto, so that the blue yellow goes over here. So I'll flip that around.
So that's now flipped and the blue yellow is there. And now when I turn it back, the centers will come back. That blue yellow will be correctly paired there. And that white red will also be correctly paired. So really simple. And that's the way to take care of the last or the, the swap of those two parts. All right, the next stage of the solve is actually pretty straightforward and it's really nice because essentially now we finally get to insert these inner edges here. So the way I would do this is look for an inner edge, which is white orange, and I say, well, that's going to go around to here like that. So I need to have the white orange parts with the white on top if I was going to do this. So let's say that I was, I'll just bring that down and reorient it so that that's ready. So I can turn it on like that. Again, I would then look at the yellow blue and say, well, that needs to be yellow blue. And you can see that happens to be there and it's correctly oriented. Now we're ready to go. All we do is do this. It's almost like a down, down, up, up. That to there, third piece on, undo, undo. And the only pieces that are interacting there are these little inner edges. Nothing else is touched. You can see that's now completely reduced that white orange, completely reduced the blue yellow. Once again, I would say, all right, here's another one, orange, yellow. Where's that? The orange has got to be on top. So I'll get the orange yellow part on top. That has a, a red green. So I've got to have a red green there with a red on top. And it's sitting down here. So we'll put that into position. And again, away I go. Down, down, up, up. Orange, yellow done, red, green done. I'll continue working through. I think there's one thing at the end that can happen. We'll have a look at. Well, this is a little bit of an interesting situation. We've got the blue, red that needs to go there, the green, white that needs to go here. Now, before we think, oh, that's a swap, I actually also have this other one where that is flipped in position. So let's use this initially as a third piece, get it up into position there. Don't really care about the orientation of that because all I'm trying to do is just get the blue, red in. I can't get the green, white into there. I'll get the blue, red in first. So let's do that. All done. Now, what I notice is that I've actually got a swap. I've got the red, yellow to go here, the green, white to go back here. So the first thing that I'll do, because I've got the swap, I'm just going to put them next to each other. So the, the yellow, red will turn correctly onto its edge. So I'll have the yellow on top there, just like that. So you can see that's going to turn into there. And then the white, green would also turn back to there. So I just position them like that. That's my swap. Now, all I'm going to do to deal with this is to turn one of the edges onto the other one with the slice turn. So turn like that. I'm then going to flip this piece around in the standard fashion. Which takes twice as long on this cube. Don't really need to do that last turn, so I won't worry about it. Now that that's flipped, I I don't actually need to turn it back this way, but I'm going to. So I've got I've sort of got part of it done. Now you remember how I turned it across to here and flipped this piece, and then I've turned it back. Now what I want to do is do the opposite. I want to turn this across to here, like that, and flip this piece. So away I go. Oh my goodness, a complete normal set of turns. Okay, and that being done, the final thing is to turn that back. And you'll see that that's untouched and the red, yellow and the white, green have now been successfully placed. So you're turning the slice to place one, flipping that one and turning it back and then doing the reverse, turning the slice this way, flipping this one and turning it back. Really simple sort of technique. That's all we need to do. There were actually two things that I wanted to show. That was one of them. Let me set up for the other one. Okay, and this is that last situation and we've got two edges done. We've sort of got a flip. We've got two flipped edges here, these inner edges. 
And this is actually pretty straightforward to fix once you know what you're doing. And what it is, is I essentially want to involve a third piece. So I'm going to involve that red yellow as well. And I simply want to cycle the three pieces around initially. So I want to get them out of that flip. So I, what I've got now is three pieces that need to place. Now, if I just turn them back, I notice that the green would go down to here and be flipped. The green would come up to the top and that'll be flipped. The red yellow would place perfectly. So what I need to do instead is now flip this entire edge. So I need to take this down to the bottom and have the white on top of the white green. I'll take that down to the bottom, bring it back. So the white is on top. Now, if we consider what's going to happen, the green is going to come to there and place correctly. This green is going to go to there and place correctly. And then the red will cycle over to there. So simply by flipping that piece there, we now turn back these edges, the direction they came from, and we find that all three of those have now been reduced. And of course, all the centers are back. So that's pretty much everything you can encounter in regards to placing these inner edges. Okay, well, the last stage really of this solve is to solve it like a three by three. I'm gonna do that super quick. I'm assuming that people generally would know how to do that. I'm just using, I guess, my standard edges first methods not my method it's just the method that i use probably takes a little bit longer on this one and it's easy as you can see just to dislodge those pieces this one here it's the white cross complete Try and place a few middle layer edges now. Okay, that's three then done. There's the fourth. I'll place the yellow green and the yellow orange is already in. So let's get that yellow green in. Now we'll have a look at what's what here. I've got a three cycle. This is just the same as any normal Rubik's cube. You're either gonna have three cycle, you might have a couple of flipped edges in position, but it's easy to fix. You might have a swap of two edges, in which case you would turn the yellow face one turn, resolve the back two. As per normal, this is just a three cycle, which will solve with four turns. Ah, in fact, it's not a three cycle. Let me just have a look at that again because I've obviously got a swap and I didn't look very carefully at the colours. The worst thing about that is I've had to undo those moves. Yeah, look at that. The blue yellow is actually in position. These two need to swap. So I'll open my eyes now. Since I've got a swap of two pieces, I've got to do what I said. Turn the yellow face one turn. Replace the yellow green back to there. That's in position, and then put the yellow orange back to here. And oh my goodness, it nearly makes you want to throw it, to be brutally honest. Now we've got an actual three cycle, and what have I got? Yellow, blue, blue, red, red, yellow. This is one of those ones where every piece is going to turn into its position and orient not correctly so i'm just going to do a three cycle to set it up so i can actually now do what i was trying to do at the start and cycle those edges home so as i said just like a normal rubik's cube and the the last little thing is to solve the corners and i'll use the corner piece series for this so just looking for a, a corner to come down an edge or across the back and cycle three pieces like this 
this is the place I find most likely to accidentally turn one of these little pieces as I'm going. So I, I do try and keep a bit of an eye on that. What is next? Nothing obvious. Let's do the orange, green, white across to there. I'll probably do the orange, green, yellow into that position. Go. I just, that's better. Okay. White, green, that's a, that can go across the diagonal, but I've got these two pieces done, so I might ignore that for the moment. Yeah, white, blue, orange. Again, that's got to go across to there, so I'll set it up and then use these three pieces. And just to be clear, this is not any kind of issue where it requires lubrication or anything like that. It's just a poorly made, a poorly designed puzzle in this sense that these things just, they're a little bit squishy and anyway, you can see that. What have we got? Orange, blue, yellow is in, no, it's not in position. It's got to go there. White, green, red to there and yellow, blue, red across to here. Okay, well, I'm going to place those ones. And that should leave me a three cycle now. Red, green, yellow to here. The yellow, orange, blue. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to cycle this one home and I'll cycle this one home. I don't know if this is going to correctly orient. I don't think it will. But I won't make any bold predictions. Okay, so if that was all solved, you're done. And this is the thing that can happen at the end. It's fairly straightforward to fix, that single twisted corner here. And what we want to do is essentially twist the corner into its correct orientation. So I'll just look at that and say, well, that has got a twist like that. That's great, the corner's fixed. Now I've got to just replace these three small pieces here. So I would just look at which direction I'm turning. So do I turn the white red across to here or the red green to here? Well, clearly I've got to turn the white red to that direction. So I'm going to turn this piece onto there. Now I want my third piece to be over here somewhere so I can replace this one. So, because the reason for that is I can't just turn this third piece up like that because the white green will land in that position. I need it to land in this position. So as a setup, I'm going to just bring it around to this position first. Like so, so that's ready there. Now, I'm going to turn the white red onto its position. That one's redone. Now I'm going to replace this piece with this piece with the green white, and the green white, as I said, needs to land over here. So I'll basically do this up turn, turn it on, undo like so now i can turn that back when i turn it back you'll see that the red green it comes back in places properly and so does that white green so they're all fixed and what i need to do now is undo these setup moves that have put the edges out so i think well i turned across here and then brought it up and then turned it back so i'm going to undo that by turning across bringing down and then turning it back and the other setup move was to move the edge from here to here. So now I can clearly see I've got to involve these three edges. And all the edges are back, all the little pieces are back, and you'll notice there's now two corners that are twisted. But when we look at it, we'll see that this one has to twist clockwise, this one has to twist anti-clockwise. That's exactly what we need to be able to solve the cube. So that is the method for fixing that single twisted corner. Now I'll just take care of the last 
a lot of it will twist this one anti-clockwise so this is always harder than it should be but it's two up up down downs basically because everything is just getting squished caught and stuck and you lose track of what move you're on i don't think i have this time i think that's now twisted it will turn the other one into its position and twist this one clockwise go bring that upper turn back and that grills to cube after all that and after the turning trouble is solved